VIP access. VIP access with Aniko on Africa Loud. Hello and welcome back to VIP Access. It's a very exciting week for me right here at my podcast. I'm hosting an artist and individual who I have always wanted to have a longer conversation with. He's not a stranger to many of you, definitely a friend to me, and also a legend when it comes to jazz music. Welcome to VIP Access, Aaron oh, Rimbui. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. Fantastic to have yeah. you back in Kenya. Oh, yeah. It's Mr. Great. International, if I may <laughs> add. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's great to be here. And it's always, yeah, it's, this, this is where I was born and bred. So. Of course. Yeah. Of course. So for those who are watching and listening, I'm always painting a picture to who I'm, in, I'm interviewing. Um, for me, Aaron, it's, it's, it's just really always an honor to, you know, be around you, to witness, um, you know, your art, your music, to listen to you, to mm. enjoy Thank your you. live music performances, to see you at a festival. Um, and I must say, I actually had um, um, June Gashui here at the podcast, and I was telling oh, yeah, her, really? like, you, you guys don't realize, like, how much of influence even my taste in music. Because oh, wow. once you um, fall in love with jazz, I feel like it opens a world of possibilities, Absolutely. right? And you just look at different genres, different ways, and oh, yeah. think of how R&B can play with something uh, else. So I really got that from my experience watching you perform, you know, my grapevine days when I used to host the oh, TV wow, show. Oh, wow, that's a minute. So <laughs> you have really paved the way when it comes to mm. not just um, oh. opening the the, 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 the the way for artists, but even for music fans. Oh, thank you know, you. Ex thank you. Making jazz ma literally mainstream. That's what oh, you yeah. did in this country and in East Africa. Oh, yeah. And it's not a surprise that it has taken you this far. Now you're based in New York. Now you're touring the world. Um, mm. How does it feel to, you know, just see your journey from where you started to where you are today. No, it's interesting. Um, I was having this conversation with BM and Polycarp, Saudi Soul, and as they are also reflecting on their on their careers, which got me also thinking as where I started. You know, um, my first professional gig was actually what many may not know was not actually music. I started out as a producer writing jingles for commercials mm. almost probably about 24 years ago, you know. And when I think about those days to now, I'm like, it's like many lifetimes that have happened to me, you know. And then years later, studying my, the, the, the outfit was Kanji Wugwa Kijiji Records. And that's where I actually honed in my skill as a piano player because I toured before the U.S., and then I came back and I think I was like, I think I want to uh, continue as a, as a piano player, you know, and producer. Uh, but end of 2005, that's when I launched myself out as a performing and recording artist. And this genre was, that was pretty much unknown um, in these parts of the world. So in many ways, we were shooting in the dark. Like, we didn't know whether we we're going to sell. I don't know how we're going to make money, you know. But... But why not? There's other countries that that do improvise music, and that's what jazz music is. Jazz has had a connotation for a long time as music for for people who are wealthy, which for me, I'm like, it shouldn't have, because it was started by African slaves, people who are like myself, you, um, who moved to the other part of the world, the, the other side of the Atlantic, and were expressing themselves with the instruments that they found, because they, found they could not, they didn't carry their own indigenous instrument. And so when they meet these instruments that were brought in by the Europeans, they're like, okay, let's figure out what to do with them. So there's the trumpet, there's the saxophone, and so it's Africans like you who, like you and I, who started this music. Mm. And so for me, what I like about it is that the, the thing that attracted me to it is, is the improvisation, because music is improvised. When you play Lingala and Seben, you don't know how it's going to end up. Yeah. You're like, there's a point where you're like, it'll go wherever it takes yeah. us. Yeah. And so that, that when I reflect on it, I'm like, yeah, it's, it's been a long road. Uh, and of course, now years later, I find myself now exp exp uh, expanding myself and my growth by moving now to the U.S. Mm. And um, now it's six years later, you know, um, soon to be seven. And it's been quite a whirlwind because... New York is where now all the jazz musicians, all the artists, it's like the mecca of art, performance art. 
LA is where I call it the studios where the decisions are made, but performance is where it's New York City. Broadway's there, all the big opera houses, all the big stages, Madison Square Garden, you know, um, when Bonneboy and all this, and the Afrobeats, I call it the Afrobeats Nation, show up in New York, that's where they play. Mm. And so it's, for me, it's, it's the place where there's so much to see and to learn. Uh, and it just challenged me, you know. <laughs> I was telling Bian, the people that we listen to, we listen to when we were growing up, when I was learning how to play piano, the venue that you're playing is where, is where he, they played there last night. <laughs> so you have to really up your game. Yeah. Like you have to be so way up there, even skill-wise. For a moment, I had imposter syndrome, you know? Yeah, because when you're in, not in Kenya, but maybe when you're far away, it kind of seems like, okay, they're dope and they're far away. But this, this is you standing in New York and seeing, oh my God, I'm performing at the venue where my icon performed yesterday. Absolutely. So I think the reality hits harder. <laughs> I, played, I played a show about uh, just before I came f for this trip. Mm -hmm. And I was telling someone that the piano that I was playing was a few a few weeks before was played by one of my icons. So I'm like the same piano I'm playing. I'm like that put some little. And and who is this icon? He's he's um Cuban pianist. His name is Gonzalo Rubacalba. Like for us as pianists, he's like one of the guys like we yeah we've checked out for years, you know, and and so some of the greats have played on, on, on some of the stages that I'm trying to get gigs. Mm -hmm. And so when they give me a show, I'm yeah. like, I'm not only on it, I'm like, wow. Yeah, <laughs> but that also says a lot about you and your talent and the fact that you can actually play where some of these greats are playing. Absolutely, because yeah. these are not venues for artists who haven't reached a certain level in terms of their art artistry, in terms of just, you know, even commanding the audience. They must be sure that people are going to come see you and we're not going to have an empty space or something. You know, uh, venues like the Blue Note, uh, Dizzy's Club, and Jazz, which is at the Jazz at Lincoln Center, is, is those are iconic places. Right. You know? And and so for me to even have my own show, because I played there as an uh, as playing with other musicians, of but course. now this was my own show, which was celebrating Kenya's 60th wow. anniversary. So so they booked That's me. Dope. That that was good, and I got Kanji Mugwa, who was also relocated to the U.S. Yes. So I, I was like, I had to bring bring out the best, yes, you know, for course. the show, and we. Let's put it this way, because when when you play at a jazz club, you have two sets. So you play uh, seven thirty to nine, and then nine thirty to eleven, and in between, these folks get out, others come in. Those who came for the first show stayed for the second show. Wow! They're like, we're going out and going to buy some other, some other tickets. And let me quote um, uh, Donald Kipkorir, famous lawyer. Mm. He says, "Why is it that when Kenyans get outside there, we we just fly?" It's a, what is it about this place that doesn't allow us to necessarily completely just fly out and just ex go to the uttermost parts of the world, you know? And I think it's just the talent that we have here. I say that many times. I've told Bian that he can out sing so many of the, those who are making headway right now, you know? Because the talent is too much. Look at the runners. Look at, you know, we, we have too much to offer. And even for myself to get a, a booking like that, it's, like, it's literally wow. for us to take ourselves out there. Abs you, I, know. you couldn't have put it better. We need to... Uh, one of the things that I'm doing right now is touring with Tiwa Savage, and which is a whole other world for me in terms of now touring as pop. You know, <laughs> doing pop of the highest You know, I saw you, I saw you on <laughs> Tiwa as like social media. I was like, whoa. Oh, yeah. So Aaron did that. And so uh, being in the groom room before, before we, we do our shows, um, I meet all these... All these artists, so, uh, we played in L.A. and Whiskey was there, you know, uh, Don Jazzy, all the all the big acts in uh, current big acts in in in, uh, in Afrobeats, mm. which now has become pop. Yes, world over. So I I was like, you know what? It's been two years now. Let me let me see what is it what what is it that they're doing mm. that is bringing them to that space. Yes, you know, and I think two years later, I should say that they sit in the table that makes those decisions. You need to be at the right place. Yes, you need to the, be seen. You need to be at the right place at the right time. And I, I know we always say Africa's time, but there's n they, I would say there's not any time more prime than this time. You need, <laughs> I was telling Bien that you need to sit at the right, the right table. The yeah. tables where the decisions are made, being made. 
And in this dispensation, the U.S. is still the country to make those yeah. decisions in terms yeah. of, of music. And it also happens that most of the people streaming their music are actually in America, the majority uh, or Europe or whatever. That's why everyone is outside Absolutely. because these are the people paying to stream music. W when you see Banner Boy, when you see Davido, when you see all these big art artists, they they have a foot in the U.S. and Europe. So you need to have a foot in because Spotify and Apple Music and all these streaming platforms and the record the record labels, the three big record labels are American companies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so you have to be where it's where those decisions are made. Mm -hmm. So if you're not, it'll just be like, yeah, you're dope, but who are you? You know, and where are you? And where are you? Yeah. In fact, even I've had that question many times. Like, where are they? <laughs> you know? Yeah. So like they're dope, but where are they? But then you tell them that you're in Kenya, like, okay, now there's the logistics, visas, mm -hmm. what and, and and many people won't make decisions right there, right now, you know. But now if you put in other other uh, logistical, I won't say issues, but uh, but steps. Even hurdles, yeah. Yeah, they'll be like, oh, okay. <laughs> they'll move on to someone yeah, else yeah, who's yeah. available. Yeah. Who may not be as talented, mm. but is there. Is, oh, the my <laughs> goodness. So, f so for you, you also do feel like this move was necessary. Absolutely. Absolutely. It was, in fact, uh, someone asked me, what would I tell my younger self? You know, I'd be like, I should have made this move way before. Really? Oh, yeah. I should have. I should have. There's a time I toyed with it when I was in my late 20s. But I was like, oh, what should I do? It's gonna, it was a little daunting at that time. It is daunting even yeah, to think yeah. about it now. Like, just to pack your bags and be like, I'm moving to New York and I'm going to start over, you know, my career, whoever I am, and just, you know, figure it out. It's quite daunting. It w Absolutely. There's, it's like uh, when I turned 40... Um, four years ago, I went and did skydiving. Uh, I was like, I had to jump. And sometimes you just have to make a jump. Your career requires sometimes just to be like, you know what, if that's what it requires. Many of these Nigerians are doing that. Like, Adekunle Gold, I was having a conversation with him and Bien, and he, and he was like, you just have to move. Like, he lives in, uh, I think he's based out of Houston right now. Mm, he is. And, 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 and to be there at that point, to, you need to be there. You know, the artist who made it, I had one say that the base, the, we used to say it as, as, as instrumentalists, the musician who gets the gig is the one who's there, <laughs> the one who's dope. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say the same thing as even with pop and Afro pop. And yeah. now that my foot is also in pop, I'm beginning to see how this, this artist with Tiwa, Tiwa who has been grinding for so many years, mm. just to see conversations, hearing what they say. No, because I spent a lot of time with with her. We're of on the, course. Th actually, this tour, this tour, we're on, we did a bus tour, and like last year, we were flying a lot. Mm. So this time, we're like in the do a show, get in the bus next. So it's a lot of conversations and just hearing. So I was like, let me, other than air my opinions, let me just sit and listen. Yes. And so I'm like, oh wow, mm. you just have to be there. She's she's based up before the tour. She she was probably living in 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 in. Uh, LA for five months. You need to plant yourself where these decisions are made. And so, and that's my challenge right now, even to artists that I'm in, interacting. Like, you gotta have to be. In, you may not necessarily have to move. If you can relocate, even better. <laughs> but you need to have a foot in. I love this. You're not even mincing words. Like, you do need to either relocate or either, you know, have just visit, yeah, have, have, have a foot, foot in. in. Have a foot in. Like, you can't, there's no other way. Mm -hmm. We can have as many podcasts and, yeah, have, and we strategies. Can talk the whole yeah, we can talk. Day. Yeah, yeah, we can <laughs> talk. But the people who are making the moves are the ones who are there. Wow, that is powerful. I see it, and I've lived it because I'm now in pop. Next year, more pop. There's more shows. And see, so. this is why I was saying, if if I could go back to my introduction, like you have made me look at music differently. And because of that possibility is why you're even in pop. If if jazz was something so uh, strict to how it must sound, you would never even be at pop. Like anything can be jazzified if, let me if tell there's you, any word like that. Let me, pick <laughs> up, let me leave it just to add, let me just, what you've said, let me give you a first-hand experience. It's because of a jazz gig, gig I got a pop gig. The musician, the, the guy who I had a show last year, mm. were doing a South African Independence Day 
thing and they asked me to be the musical director at the Lincoln Center. So I got this, he's a dope bass player, like one of the top bass players. His name is Michael Latuja. Now, what I didn't know is that he grew up with Tiwa in the, UA, in the UK. So now Tiwa last year was looking for some musicians to mm. tour with. So he hit me up. A month later. And see, if you were not even there, you would not have not gotten there. the job because you're already in America where they're touring. Absolutely. Got it. You see? Got it. Oh, my so goodness. So you need to be there. So when someone is sitting at home seeing um, Aaron on Instagram, they're like, wow, Tiwa called Aaron. But it's not just that she called you. You are actually there. There, closer to the, where she was searching. There's like a circle. Hey, you are in that circle. How how music works, even for, let me even talk about just even instrumentalists. Because right now, when I look back from where we started, those days before even, even Eric, when Eric had just come back. So time has, times have changed. But now there's a whole new generation of, I can see players, keyboard young, young, really dope players who are, who are out there. You need to be at the place where all this, you need to be available. That's what I can say. Mm -hmm. Some of these gigs, is it's you just need to show up. You need to be there. And I feel like that's the nature of our industry, the mm. creative sector, the entertainment industry, the music industry. And I feel like it's the same even for me in PR. Sometimes people are like, how did you get to work with these people, do this? And to be very honest with you, I, I just showed up. You, you, know, you were there. I was in the right places I, where I needed to I be. I can tell you, I can say about you from the days of Grapevine, <laughs> you have you have been there. Like you're always showing yourself. Like this gig, I can't tell you how many how many gigs I've played. <laughs> so <laughs> many. From the days, the early days of blankets and wine. Yeah. That's 15 yeah. years ago. Yeah. You are always there. Yeah, just, I, I always say, like, I didn't do anything. I just was there, you know. And if someone called me, I would just pick up or email and just respond. Absolutely. But be there where it's happening. You, you know? have to be there. And I see some dope talent. Some, some I listen to Lisa Noah. I listen to, right now, uh, what's her name? Zinia. Zinia, who did our BV's backing vocals for the, the, for, for the Bowman Project. Yes. Your album with Bean. And she's an incredible artist. She just moved to LA as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and, right, see, and just by her move, look at the look at what her relocation. Look at what look at the move she's making right now. Yeah. Yeah. Because she's there. Yeah. RK, Robert Kamanzi. He's even he moved to the US a year before I did. Mm. And the and the connections and the work that he's doing, the people he's meeting, he like, there's no way. There's no way it's going. That was going to uh, happen. No. There's no way. There's absolutely no way. So, so for me, I'm like, that is the big aha. The last three years, I'm like, hmm. So skill is great. Mm. Be dope. So that even when you're there and someone calls you, you're dope at what you do. Yes. But I think the big one is that you just have to be there. You have to be present. You have to be at where 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 the action is. Yeah. Yeah. And. Talking about your relationship with jazz, you know, you do a lot. You mm -hmm. are a composer. Yes. You're a pianist. You're a keyboardist. You're a music director. You are, you know, a recording artist. You have curated festivals. You are a great live performer, and you love that. Um, what really ticks you the most? I think the expression of art. I like to perform. I like to, to be in places where art is being expressed. Mm. Um, that's what I get excited about, you know. Uh, when when Saudi Soul toured th this this uh, the U.S. their last U.S. Yes. tour, and I just had to jump in. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I I'm have coming to. in. <laughs> I have to. Like I, I told them, like uh, by fire, by force. <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting into because for me I'm like, there's something about the the giving of art because art a song can change. You know, you don't know who has showed up. Because in fact, my, my mantra is when all, everyone who shows up for your, for your concerts, for your festivals, for your show, you've got no idea what people are going through. Mm. It's an opportunity for me as some, someone who expresses art to change and touch a life. Mm. That's powerful. Because music, has got our, music has, has, gets to places where words cannot. True. And for some reason, I just feel like jazz artists, you come with this kind of, community 
let me talk about that's right that's the right word community the thing about jazz music is and which is pretty much african music we can say we're going to play this song but we leave it open for other things to happen yeah. in between the song. It's like live curation. Right there. And live making. Being present. That's what I like about yeah. about about That part about is so jazz. dope. Yeah. And so so even uh, a few a couple of days ago I played a show with Eddie Green. Every time I'm in town I play with Eddie. Of course. And we we'll, we'll be like, yeah, we're going to play this, we're going to play this, we're going to play this, but even in the middle of the song, someone can just start something. You're like, oh, that's where you want us to go? Let's okay, go. Okay, let's go. <laughs> and and, and, and then when you're playing with June, she starts to... Absolutely, yeah, yeah. She starts something and you like, know? let's go somewhere else. Yeah. And that's the thing, that's the beauty about jazz music. And then, even the name jazz, it, it was just a name that people were like, what is that jazz you're playing? Mm. It was like a slang. Like, what yeah. is that that you're playing? What is this that you're playing? And so, um, it, the thing, when people... Cause, Jazz is, is uh, to define it, is difficult. But one thing we all agree on, it has, there has to be improvisation. Yes. yes. So, because ja jazz music is the only genre of music that touches every other genre. Right? Yeah. It's the only other music that touches pop, that touches R&B, that touches gospel, that touches African music, that touches Afrobeats, that touches everywhere. It has it. And all the musicians who are currently touring with pop music, whether rock, are all jazz musicians. Why? Because we know how to respond. <laughs> I know how to respond. You give me something, I'm like, oh, you want so, us to go there? So Let's I, go. I, are, we, are we telling the people on this podcast that you all have been loving jazz even though you didn't know? You didn't know. <laughs> I look at, I look at uh, Beyonce's uh, Renaissance tour. Mm. All the musicians on stage, they're all jazz musicians. Right? All of them. All the directors. All of them. Yes. If the guy's playing saxophone, the guy's playing keys, the people playing drums, they're all jazz musicians or can play jazz. Why? Because, because of the ability to compose on the spot and to respond mm. makes us very versatile. So I can play a rock gig. I can tour with a country rock musician and be at home. At the same time, I can go to Mali and tour with Vio Fakature and be at home. I can come to Kenya and do a record with Vien. Right. Exactly. A jazz pop record. Absolutely. Who said you, that can be done? And that's As a matter of fact, I think Bald Men Love Better was nominated um, for a Sound City MVP award in 2023. You know, best song in Africa. So yeah. big ups to that. And also uh, an Afrima too. Right. So so for me, even that's, that was the philosophy with Bian. Because Bian is in the pop world. But also he's, uh, he is also a player. He plays instruments and composes. So when he hit me up, because that was his idea. I I I didn't thought of an album with him, but he's like, why don't we do a record? Like, really? Okay, fine. Now, me, the jazz musician, was like, okay, I jumped to it because that's what we do. <laughs> like, so what are we gonna do? We'll decide. Let's meet and see what we can do. Uh, and since then, that is one of the most beautiful works of art that I've done. Hundred percent. And even for him, we're talking about it. Like, so let me just put it out there. Look out for Bald Man Two. Really? Oh yeah. We're not gonna. Wow. We're, we're not. Let me put it this way. We're <laughs> not even giving... Uh, Ballman, it'll be two, three, four, five, like the way you say John Wick or like like a movie. We're not giving any other title, just Ballman 2. That's such an exclusive. Oh, yeah. And I've just put it out there. When I say VIP access, so we, see, you get it from the real... From yeah. the horse's mouth. Ballman 2. Look up no, for but it. what a beautiful mm -hmm. record. What a beautiful record. I spoke to BN about it, and we also spoke briefly during the launch of this um, album, EP, Balmain Love Better. Which one was your favorite song of all those? It, I, I, I think yeah. all of them All of them have got a different connotation or yes. vibe to it. Um, one Boy is Down That was just a fun tune <laughs> because we were like, we had written, we had written the other four. And then like, so I was like, why don't we do, we both like old school rumba mm. that our, both our dads mm. love. So we're like, let's write a song that both our dads, thankfully they're alive, yeah. would be like, they would be like, yes. So I was, it was me and him and Ben So. Yes. So I played some chord changes. I played some, like, like this is how it should sound. So like, okay, they took their phones, voice note, and like, we'll write some music. So when they came back the next day, which was our last day at the studio, because like we have to record this because we don't have any other studio time, so they came and sang this, the 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 lyrics. I was I was laughing. I'm like, <laughs> what what what? 
<laughs> kunyo maji <laughs> ukimaliza kunyo, kunyo pombe. pombe i was like i was like that it, first of all it took me way back because that's the old rumba that those yeah. are the lyrics yeah so when they got to the to the to the hook so they sang my name because that's my 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 nickname aroro aroro i thought that it's a filler because when you're writing lyrics sometimes you can put a, a, a lyric to fill in for something so like dope so you guys will come back and with a the chorus they're like no that's the hook. i like you guys you 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 are like are you guys for real and like yeah and what i loved about this song and this entire record collab you did with bn is it's essentially jazzy at the same time it's pop it's not your typical hit record yet it was that hit record everything that we both do was found in that record there's improvisation where i take my solos there's pop which is the ballman anthem yeah. there's r&b because we are all r&b guys yes. there's what's out his soul do yes. and that's why when we played a homage with coming home which yes, was very stripped course. down so everything that encompasses our career was in that record this is a record for us guys we will be doing this ballman thing till we are till we are old men <laughs> <laughs> bald bald old men <laughs> and so you have um quite two album yes. there's desire and mm. obviously this one with bn and uh before we started this interview you said something a word i never heard before that you decommissioned okay some of your music and coming to, to this podcast i thought you had five albums and i couldn't find some of them but you just explained to me that i actually just scrapped oh, them yeah. out so when i put out my first records in uh, 2005 and 2009 they were really good compositions but as as years went by i felt like in terms of production and some of the decisions i made in terms of recording and how how it sounded like uh -uh. cuz at that time i felt okay now i'm moving to the us i need to have the best that i can have so if i'm going to say like this is what i this is my music i need i needed it to be at the top of the of the game yes so when i listen to uh keys of life and alpha jiria is like mm, they don't they don't quite cut it you know so like why don't i take some of the songs and start reworking mm. them and reimagining them uh cuz the the first initial idea was to reimagine a, an entire album which okay. himo sekela has done before mm. where he did an album before and then he reimagined it later they're like no i don't want to no that's not where the, my space was so 20 2015 I did a record called Deeper uh where as like the space that I was in was more acoustic more stripped down music where, which showcases me as a player mm. and that's how Deeper came but uh, three or four of the songs in that record are from those two albums mm. then come Kwetu which was recorded in 2016 in South Africa with two two very famous um uh South African uh, musicians and they they are dope players like they are like even i was i'd i'd been moonlighting in sa for a while i'd i've got an sa connection so i was able to record uh, at the end of um 2016 in johannesburg and actually that record kwetu which ended up becoming kwetu um won an award for uh best uh, collaboration album in the mzansi jazz awards Ooh. it's like the the only of the jazz awards that is that's in that's in uh, in the southern in south african yeah. yeah now that record opened another door for me which and actually those two records deeper and kwetu deeper um that's why me and bian have got this incredible story because bian actually features in one of the songs yeah one of the songs in yes, deeper yes alongside kato change yes so he says when we were doing the sessions for that song at the uh, at Bruce of the Ambo studio rest in peace. He walked down as he, he was going back home he's like, "You know what? I'm not going to collaborate with this guy." <laughs> he had like that was 6 years before we did our record. Crazy. So like one day I'm going to do something that with this. That is so crazy. Yeah. Cuz I've had a relationship with with Saudi Soul from way back when, you know. So now that song ends up being on Spike Lee's She's Got to Have It. Oh, season 2. So cuz they put out a call for for artists independent artists to put out music I'm like if I put out this song I bet you there's no one who has put out this song this type of music cuz Bian singing Luya you know this is someone <laughs> so so and it went 
And wow. that, that opened a door for me on Netflix. Um, Kwetu ends up becoming the song itself, Kwetu, the great Kirk Willem, who has been here before, great saxophonist, Grammy Award winning musician. I was introduced to him when he was, during the Safaricom Jazz Festival during his run. Two years later, you know, after exchanging contacts and meeting, it's like, I'd like to record a song for my next record. And he picked Kwetu and featured me and the Ghetto Classics. Wow. So it's not only my song that is on his record, but I'm also featuring on it. That's dope. Because of Kwetu. That's yeah. the record that we did in South Africa. And of course, now other opportunities find themselves with now the Bowman project, which one of the songs was used for a soundtrack, you know. Um, and and these opportunities just have been just incredible for me, you know. Um, as I look at my career to now, and it's interesting to me as I'm now middle-aged is when I'm getting into pop. You'd have thought that when I was younger, that's when right? I should have been doing pop. Right. But it's now as a middle-aged guy is when now I'm getting to, to pop music. So it's been quite an interesting run. Um, and then now with the decommissioning, that's what the decommissioning is. Mm -hmm. And even for my new record, so I've got three projects that I'm working on at the moment that will be released in the coming months. Mm -hmm. Actually, they've already been recorded. So I went back to my trio jazz music because I've not done anything yet. I've not released any jazz music since 2017. So, and I've got some really good players from, from, um, from LA. Now, some of the music that, that I did in Keys of Life and Alpha Jiri is on this record. Mm. So I decommissioned them, but the songs are still dope songs. Yeah, so which they're you finding them. Yeah, so they're finding themselves in Fantastic. this other music. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, and then also I'm releasing a solo piano album. Just Ooh. me sitting on the piano, short songs. They're like meditations. Um, which was which was a whole other interesting experience for me to record in a very, very, very good uh, recording studio, the grand piano. Now, it's interesting to hear yourself without other instruments. The only time I hear myself was when I'm practicing. But now you're doing an entire al album where you have to go back into the recording booth and then play back what you've recorded. And you sit there and you're like, wow. So it's, it's risky cause, um, <laughs> because uh, I can't hide behind someone else playing. Yeah. It's all there. Yeah. So you have to really, really be dope. <laughs> yeah. So even I had to really practice and practice and practice what I was going to record. So it's it's a whole new thing for me. There's another project that I'm doing, which is meditations, like kind of like lo-fi, um, which is a whole new thing for me too. Uh, where Because there's on YouTube, there's lo-fi and yeah. meditation music is, is quite few. People want that type of music yeah. to sleep to, mm -hmm. to relax. So that's that's my new my new endeavor right now, um, uh, and and I'm really really excited about what's what's. That's what's so dope. Yeah, yeah. That's so dope. I'm so excited for you, and um, I, I just really enjoyed this podcast. You know, and for me, you embody, uh, you know, very someone who's super talented, and um, someone who's not mainstream. I think in normal people think of art and think of mm. musicians as a certain in a certain way like you have to sound this way you have to look this way and you are a superstar if, if you're tea or if you're saudi mm. so mm. but i just love how you have um you know honed your skill and been able to you know just make a wonderful career out of the arts that you do and i think that's the most important thing i, I would like to come out of you know my takeaway and for anybody listening like Whoever you are, whatever you play, whatever art you create, you can be the best you could be and you could go anywhere and do you just how you would like to do yourself. Um, and I, I, I want to thank you so much, you know, for coming through to this podcast, for your contribution um, to the jazz music mm. in Kenya, in East Africa, globally, um, everything you're doing in, in, in America or Europe or whatever it is, you know, r really does reflect back on us and mm. really inspires us. So I do hope any, you know, person listening, any Kenyan, you know, take something from this and would like to go out and do mm. th them and achieve whatever they want to achieve. Um, before we wrap up, any other thing you might want to say that I haven't asked you? 
I think it's just a bit commentary about what you just said about uh, the I call it the behind the scenes success. Uh, sometimes in the creatives and in music, people think success meaning means having a hit song, being seen, being famous, which is great. That's part of the success. Yeah. But there are other people who are the behind the scenes who are equally successful. Yes. Who may not get their shine, but they are living wonderful careers. Like they are okay. Like, just because you're not seen doesn't mean that you're not successful. And that's the biggest lesson that I've learned many years into, into the music business. And now I'm settled with that. Like, I don't have to be seen. If I'm seen, great. If I'm not, I'm doing my work. You know, uh, camera people, those who are... Who, who, music yeah, producers. Music producers, those who, who sit and grind music in the studio. Music ed Editors, those who are behind the scenes. Band members. Yeah, who may not be seen. And sometimes even, because I've have been in those spaces. So you may think that you're not doing anything. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. In fact, it's because of you. Some of those people Music who are out there. Music publicists, nobody. Absolutely, yeah, publicists. There's all these other yeah. people who, that, and, many, and, and many times there's no shine on them, but having lived that life as for a long time as a behind the scenes person, mm -hmm. as, someone who, as, a, as a keyboardist who accompanies other artists, you know, uh, you may think like, ah, when is my turn? Like, no, your turn is already happening. Yeah, man. It's already going on. Yeah, man. And you're dope. <laughs> yeah, man. And it's good. So so just be encouraged. Yeah. That's dope. That's yeah. dope. That's so dope. Oh, my God, Aaron. Thank you so much. And, um, you know, welcome back to Kenya. Ah. I hope to see you when I come to New York. I've never been, but oh, I've really? always been planning. Oh, you know, I always <laughs> say that, you know, New York's not a city. It's an experience. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, 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 I guess so. Because oh, even yeah. Burna Boy was saying in an interview, it's like, oh, my God, this place is like Lagos. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then it, people are like, what do you mean? It's, uh, cause a I've been to, Yeah, because I've been to Lagos. It's, it's, you agree to that? Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. It, That's it, not it, what it, I was it, it is. It 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 has so much, so much culture. So much. There's order. Let me just put it this way. So New York has order. Lego, <laughs> Lagos is a whole other vibe. <laughs> My Lagos people. <laughs> In fact, let me just end this. So when we were going, because I went to Lagos because of Tiwa, we were playing a show there. So and they warned me. They're like Aaron. So when you get there, but just know. <laughs> This it's about Lagos. to get crazy. It's, it's about to become something. And uh, just, we're warning you from the airport. <laughs> we're warning you that you have never seen anything like this. And for real, <laughs> I've never seen anything the like commotion. that. The commotion. Nigerians, I give Nigeria, Nigerian people. I give, man, I have absolute... They have to be given an award for how much they show out. Even oh, how they show out for they, their artists, even at the airport. I'm like, unapologetic. it's not even a concert, but you act like... Tiwa is performing. She's just passing. Okay, guys, relax. And, and, and uh, being in Lagos, I was like, no wonder you guys are like this. I was like, it makes sense. I'm like, okay. Now the, the, all the pieces fell together. Yeah. I'm like, wow. In know. that in that heat. But we went to even where where they took me on a tour where because they're like we're not going to eat hotel food like we're going to take you to the Kibanda, <laughs> where where it's 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 where uh, Whiskey one of the one of the guys in the in the group grew up where Whiskey grew. Uh, oh, Jeleba. Yeah. They took you to a Jaleba, where there's a big bridge. Absolutely. Okay. Like, went all the place went to a small <laughs> place where they, like, where we ate some rice and some, all their food. I'm like, it's... Jollof, uh, Jollof. Don't, don't vex the Nigerians. No, them, they're Jollof. In fact, even I... Not let, rice. I have got a gripe <laughs> with Tiwa and the team. I'm like, I cannot eat... You guys can't give us Jollof every show. <laughs> Every show, but that's that's the unapologetic but spirit it's true. of the I've Nigerians. Given to them, yeah. Parker, they're going to make Nigerian food Every now global, show. right? I, I, two years. Every show, the green room when you're backstage. It's jollof. When the catering comes in, I was like, "Come on, guys. Okay, yes, I get it. I get it." And plantain, wherever you there. are, jollof, plantain, and choice of meat, whether it's beef, whether it's chicken, goat. whatever, goat, <laughs> and pepper soup. Everything and Eddie so, and so, yeah, but so so I think for me that's that's the it's quite a, what an interesting ride that I've been what on. What an interesting <laughs> ride you've been on. When when someone sees uh, you're talking to a jazz artist, they would never think. Uh, no. this is the story of a jazz artist. No, we we touch. That's you the really thing about took this improvisation thing to the ex the, the the farthest extent you could. We touch everywhere. And that's the thing about jazz music, because be, to be able to improvise, I need to get to know your style. I need to get this one. I need to go so I can have the language. Yeah. So, but that, that's that's it's been quite a ride. Yeah. And thanks for having me. 
Karibu. So, yeah. Welcome. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you so much, Aaron. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the virtuoso, the music on yourself himself, Aaron Mbui, here on VIP Access. Please go out there and follow Aaron Mbui, stream his music. Um, follow him because there's more dope live performances anywhere across the world. Um, or you can just go back and stream his music. Remember, VIP Access is also syndicated on Nation FM in Kenya and MX24 TV in Ghana. Thank you so much for always coming through. And um, me and Aaron are capping off. Off. Thank you. Thank Asante you. Asante. Asante. Thank you. VIP Access Season 4 is proudly supported by the Australian High Commission.